Well, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Job from a very dreek and wet Sydney. Flooding in northern New South Wales and in Queensland. Troubles continue in the world and we continue to have the Word of God, which we're going to chapter 39. And uh, we've been learning the lessons from the animals. God has pointed to the animals to point out various lessons for life. And this is a really fascinating one as well. So, chapter 39, verse 26. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings towards the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? It dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is its stronghold. From there it looks for food. Its eyes detect it from afar. Its young ones feast on blood. And where the slain are, there it is. Now, I love this in so many ways. Um, it's just this powerful image of the hawk or the eagle. Now again, not just in biblical times, but up to today, the, the eagle is a symbol of power or of empire. This is not Disney, shall we put it that way? This is nature, red in tooth and claw. This is the, its young ones feast on blood and where the slain are, there it is. And here's the astonishing thing in this. He says, in this, it is at God's command. What, what is being said here? What's the Lord trying to say to him here? Well, there's life and death. This is the world. And if good is going to triumph, it's going to have to deal with this evil. And I think there's a real challenge in how we understand evil and how we understand death. It's funny, I think the war in Ukraine for many people, because it's so close to a lot of Europeans. And as I say, many of us do know people in Ukraine. I mean, there's wars in Afghanistan and wars in Africa and elsewhere, but I think a lot of people in, in European countries in America feel closer to this. And I think one of the things that it does is it makes us rethink about death. Now, I think COVID's made us do that. I think climate change has made us do that. Floods like this make us do that. It makes us just realize how fragile life is. And it's also made us think about evil. How do we understand evil? You could divide the world very simply. You could say, there's Putin, he's a bad guy. And there's Jelanelski, he's a good guy. There's good and there's evil. And it's not as binary as that because the dividing line between good and evil goes through the middle of every human heart. As that other great Russian said, Solzhenitsyn. And how do we deal with death? Blood is, is a symbol of life and it's also a symbol of death. And I think that for the Christian, we're looking and we're saying, well, it's the blood of Christ that gives us eternal life. You know, the, the, this question of life and death and what is beyond is just so vital and so important. So I do think, I think this passage is one that is saying to Job, look, God is, God is sovereign in nature and he's sovereign over life and death. And for those of us who are believers, that should be a great comfort to us. We won't die till our time has come. And those of you who are missing loved ones, well, if they were believers, the Lord has taken them to be with himself. And we don't begrudge them that. It's tough for those who remain. But I think the comfort I take in all of this is just that life is not meaningless and your life is not meaningless. And I just think the whole of that, it's just a, it's a wonderful difference between the Christian view of the world and the non-Christian view of the world. There's real purpose. So, taking all that from the hawk, um, fly like an eagle. Eh? All right, uh, hopefully if we've not been washed away, I will see you tomorrow. God bless you and catch you then. Bye.